So we're going to get straight into it. The Copa Libertadores is coming up, Juan. It's very close. Boca Juniors mm -hmm. versus Fluminense. It's going to be played at the, in, in Brazil. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan, and I'm just going to go into some quick details really quickly before I get your sure, feedback. Sure, sure, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Shoot. So, you know, uh, Fluminense, uh, this, this, they, have, uh, they were founded in 1902, participated in the Libertadores final, and lost uh, to Liga Deportiva, Universitaria mm -hmm. de Quito. Juan, you can tell mm -hmm. me about my pronunciations. I'm working on it. I'm trying. Uh, and of course, we know Boca Juniors. I'll let you struggle. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, so Boca <laughs> Juniors, uh, you know, they are veterans in this competition. You know, the last time they really got to the final, we knew about that River Plate thing, and it was, it was not pretty, but that's expected when these, when these guys play. Uh, so we're going to head into the individual stats for players before I get your response. Uh, so for You're both teams, if we t take a look at the, the key players, uh, the, uh, sorry, the stats, you can see uh, in the Copa Libertadores so far, both teams played 12 matches and, uh, you know, they've both been doing pretty well. Uh, Boca Juniors, 12 goals, uh, Fluminense, 22. Uh, you know, uh, Fluminense has this Argentine striker, Roman Cano. You know, also, we're going to take a look at their head-to-head -head stats now really quickly uh, for both teams, uh, according to this thing here. Boca. You start seeing the number seven pop up a lot. That's what you end up seeing. Yes, yes, there is something that's popping up here. We pay attention to that number seven, folks. So as you can see here, you know, Boca Juniors, uh, there's two draws in there, Fluminense. Uh, and the last time they met, it was in uh, the 2012 Copa Libertadores quarterfinals. And, you know, Boca won 1-0 and drew 1-1. Um, and of course, we're going to take a look Mind at you, the that team. year they also got to the final. They, they, yeah. lost, the, they lost the Corinthians, so... Yes, yes, Corinthians. And, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of history there with Argentinians and Cor Corinthians we'll talk about. And, uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, before we get to the key players and so on, Juan, you know, what do you think about Boca? You know, both teams have, uh, you know, some veterans in there. We know Sergio Romero, he's a key player, which we'll pull up in a little bit for uh, Boca Juniors. And then you have guys like uh, Marcelo. And, uh, you know, depending on who you ask, you know, there's Melo in there. Uh, so how do you think this is going to go? You know what? It's interesting that you mentioned that as of today, uh, it's difficult to kind of get a read on, on both teams because Boca um, just the other day lost 2-1 to Racing in, in a very hotly contested match. But Boca were playing with their basically BC side, which is something that, that uh, Jorge Miron has been looking to do as soon as they qualified for the final. He, he's been looking to see if he can get his players rest. Edinson Cavani has not been playing every single match. There, there's a lot of focus on being as rested as possible for the final. Now, all that being said, they've lost a couple of players. They lost um, a youngster that, that is amongst one of the biggest promises coming out of the Boca Junior system. Keep in mind, uh, Boca have been the team so far. If, if, I mean, look at it from a... Uh, I guess even a pandemic standpoint, from 2019 to now, they have been the team in Argentine football that have debuted the most amount of youngsters with 34. So, I mean, it, it's crazy to say that, that, that their youth system have, have been able to have that many players come out. Not only that, they also won the under-20 Libertadores and also the Intercontinental against Azed Alkmar. But um, it's their veterans that make things happen. Romero... Just in this Libertadores alone has become the, the Boca goalkeeper with the most amount of penalty shot saves in the history of, of Boca Juniors. And that says a lot because they've been able to win a lot of those in recent years. Or when they won the Libertadores, a lot of them ended up being victories via the penalty spot. So you have that. You have Cavani, who still has not been able to find their, his way because the provisions haven't been what he's accustomed to at PSG, at Manchester United, at Napoli, at et cetera, et cetera. You kind of get my drift there. So it, it's difficult there. Fluminense on the other end, they're a team that's been struggling. And not only the team, the coach, Fernando Diniz, who's also uh, moonlighting, if you will, as the Brazilian national team coach. And he's come under heavy fire over the past couple of weeks because of Brazil's performance and also because of Fluminense also lagging behind in terms of the table. So it's, it's a very difficult read. And on top of that, the pitch at the Maracanã is going to be a factor as well. So there's a lot of little facets and a lot of little caveats to look at when it comes to this final and it'll be very interesting to see which team is the one that overcomes it 
All right, folks, and we're back, and uh, we're talking about the Copa Libertadores final. You know, some people may be talking about the UEFA Champions League that took place right now, but we love South American football, and we have, you know, Juan Arango here, the ultimate person to talk about these things. Juan, we're going to continue our discussion, and let's take a quick look at the, the key players for this matchup. There's a lot of them, but we narrowed it down to two from the lovely folks of SofaScore have provided us, who have provided us with this wonderful data. And it's, as just to build on what you were saying, Sergio Romero, who's a goalkeeper, you don't see this often. You know, I'm a huge fan of him. He's good at uh, shootouts. You know, everybody knows him for Argentina. He's always been a bit of a bench warmer for teams, but he always stepped it up for his national team. But for Boca, you know, if you take a look at his stats, 12 matches, 34 saves, uh, 20 saves inside the box, penalties saved, seven. Seven again, Juan. Juan. It's coming up again. Uh, goals conceded five. Of course, his heat map is going to be in and around the goal. Come on. That'll be crazy if we saw him anywhere else. And then for uh, Fluminense, uh, their key guy, Herman Cano, uh, matches played 11. He's their main guy. He scored 12 goals, two assists, and his shots per, uh, uh, per goal is 3.5. Shot accuracy, 6.4. His heat maps, as expected, is all over the place. And, uh, you know, before we jump into your thoughts on that one, uh, we're going to take a, you know, a quick look at some of the lineups that were used uh, by both teams. I know Boca Juniors used that 4-4-2, but also, you know, Rojo got a red card in the last game, but they played four at the back. You know, you have Edison Cavani up front. And, uh, you know, we're going to take a quick look at uh, Fluminense now. So let's head across to that one. Uh, they play according to, you know, our buddies at SofaScore, you know, the 4-2-3-1. As you can see there, the bad boy himself, Melo. <laughs> you know, Mr. Red Card waiting to happen and also Marcelo in there. And of course, the top striker up front. This, is, this team is, you know, it has some experience in there. Uh, so what? With that information, you know, with the key players and so on, uh, from a tactical perspective, you know, this is not, uh, you know, like a Carlos Bianchi type Boca Juniors, you know, or like a Marcelo <laughs> Gallardo River Plate. Uh, for, you know, this is, you know, Boca has not been doing really great in the domestic league. But, uh, you know, this is a competition. They kind of like the Real Madrid. I could be, you know, fans could correct me on this, you know, of this particular league. So heading into this, knowing this stuff, what do you think? Talk to me. It, it, many are talking about is mystique carrying them over. And, and what I mean by that is that Boca, I, I think they've in, in 64 shootouts throughout their history, they've been able to win 40. When and you've seen it in in recent shootouts when Romero is is the protagonist, players start thinking twice. I mean, he he has actually said it on several occasions. I relish. I want this these matches to go to penalties because I know I can at least get two. And when you have a goalkeeper that can get you two penalty shot saves in a shootout, it, it kind of really calms you down. And not only has it been great for for Boca in terms of of, of having that serenity, but also the players have been able to execute when it's their turn to shoot. It, yep. it, it's crazy because we talk about that, or people have talked more about that aspect in Libertadores play of Boca than how they've actually been able to play. Their best match in, in the group stage, or actually outside of the group stage, I should say, was the return leg against Palmeiras, where the coach almost ends up bungling it up with the, the substitution patterns that he ends up establishing, with the in unnecessary changes and kind of more alarmed to try and maintain a result than try and go and kill off the match, so much so that Fluminense, are, excuse me, that Palmeiras are able to come back and equalize and send the match eventually to penalties. And if it weren't for Romero and the tremendous performance that he had in that second half, I don't know if Boca would have even advanced because their play has not been very good. They have not been very good for a while. And, it, and there, there's a phrase that Juan Román Riquelme was, was um, uh, able to, to bring up because he see, you know, many in, in, in the media in Argentina, and that this is another issue we could delve into later on at some other point as far as where the media are and how they look for anything to try and get at Boca. They said, well, you know, Boca is not a worthy champion. Boca is not a worthy this. Boca is not a worthy that because they don't play well. And Riquelme's answer ends up being, well, then we might end up being the least worst team in Argentina. That's, a, that, so that's an you end up way to put it. That yeah. Well, yeah, because yeah. the media, the, over the past couple of years, they've always found ways in the Argentine media to go and say, well, Boca's not a deserving champion. Boca doesn't deserve to be the winner. Boca, and mind you, they if, if you look at the last eight tournaments, Boca won six, or excuse me, they won five. Correct. Yeah, the media continues saying, well, no, Boca don't deserve to win, but River won it this past 
semester running away. And all of a sudden they're saying, you know, Bayern Nunez and River Munich and, and Demicheles is bringing the, the German style of football into Argentina. And, and it's only one semester and it's only been that. So you end up seeing where the media in Argentina end up going. And it's look uh, in Argentina, there's two things that buy that, that sell. Boca and chaos and Boca losing. And the third thing is Boca winning. That's that's interesting because, you know, like uh, I'm a huge fan of, uh, I mean, putting my professionalism aside. You know, I love Argentinian football. I also love Boca Juniors. And, uh, you know, uh, it's interesting that the little dynamics heading into this game because you would think, you know, they would be the most celebrated club down there, which we'll probably discuss uh, later on, maybe in our separate segments. But uh, mm -hmm. that is very interesting. And, you know, just to, head, just to wrap this particular point up, I'm going to take a look mm -hmm. at, uh, you know, the last five matches for both teams. And, uh, you know, we'll definitely give our conclusion. So, obviously, Boca Juniors, Sumanese, you can see here on the screen that, you know, Boca is, uh, they're not very consistent, you know, kind of building up with what you're saying. You know, uh, they're not the, the most all-powerful Boca like in the past. And, uh, you know... Just for the sake of time, we're just going to get straight to it. Um, who do you think is going to win this game, Juan? It's a tough one, I know. They're both struggling. I mean, yeah. that's basically the point. I know, it's point. a tough one. Uh, if, if you look at it based on where they're playing and, and who's been better overall, you probably end up saying Fluminense. You, you, you have to, knowing that it's at Maracanã. But if there's been a team that has gone into Brazil and has been successful historically, it's been Boca. They, they've gone and won Libertadores against Palme, uh, Palmeiras. They've won in Libertadores in Brazil against Gremio. So, so they've been able to do it throughout history. That mystique is still there. Is Fluminense uh, immune to that? And we're, we're finding out. But right now, you'd have to say, if it goes to penalties, it's Boca. But if in the 90 minutes, it, it definitely could be Fluminense. Yes, yes. And you know, just to end things off before we head to another commercial break, uh, Boca Juniors now have a chance to match Independiente's uh, seven mm -hmm. trophy hall. So that's, that's going to be impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, I know everybody talk, uh, when they speak about global that's trophies, what, they talk about Real Madrid. That's why, Independiente, that's why Independiente fans are rooting for Fluminense. Yes, yes. I can see that. I can totally see that. You know, and uh, Fluminense, yeah, looking for their first title. So we'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with you. I think it's, it's a, a very difficult game to call. And uh, it's, you know, fans, mm -hmm. you can let us know what you think in our polls, which I'll put on our Instagram and what used to be called Twitter. So uh, I think, you know, it's going to be an ugly win for Boca Juniors. I think it's probably going to either be a 1-0 or they're going to go to the shootout, which Romero loves. Scaloni is probably thinking and, about... And hmm. it was, it was crazy, there's a possibility that Boca becomes the first Libertadores winner ever to not win a match after the group stage. Oh, wow. Okay, so with that being said, we're going to head to our commercial break and we'll be back. Hey everyone, thanks for watching Extra Time TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe.